Hello, this is N7LMV, and we're going to do a tutorial on a program called APRSIS32. The tutorial that we're going to be doing is solely for the use on the internet. So a lot of things that we will be discussing will not be shown on the map or the actual program. So we're going to go to the website and we're going to get the program. I go to Google search and I type in APRSIS32. APRSIS32 is an amateur packet reporting system <clears throat> which used to show the location of other amateur radio operators when they're in the process of being tracked. So we come to the first page <clears throat> and it gives you an idea of what APRS IS30 is, 32 is. It's an advanced automatic packet reporting system. It's a client for amateur radio. This program is written for Windows and it will also run on Linux and Macs. <clears throat> so we're going to go to the download section and you'll see a flashing sign that says click here to find out how to get a valid passcode to use with APRS IS CE forward slash 32. Do not click on that particular link because the link is not functional. If you need a valid passcode for your APRS IS CE 32 program you need to contact KJ4ERJ at ARRL.net and he will send you a passcode within a day or two. He's a busy man. Now there are other ways that you can obtain your passcode. Let's say you downloaded UIView in the past and they issued you a passcode for that particular program. That passcode will make this program functional. If you have downloaded an Android APRS program such as APRS Droid, that passcode will also make this program functional. Okay, what we need to do is we need to go down to Windows 32 and we'll click on this. Now you want to save this program and there is a reason why you want to save it and I'll explain that in just a moment. So click on save and it's going to ask you where you want to put your download. I've already made a folder on my desktop called APRS IS32 we click on that and we'll save the fold the file. Doesn't take long to download the file. Once the file is done, we can now close the browser and we can open up the folder. Okay. It's going to say APRS IS32. You're going to double click on the icon with your left mouse button. A new icon will appear. Okay, the other location where I put APRS IS32 is in my Windows C directory. So I'm going to go to my C directory and I'm going to go to APRS IS32. Double click that with the left mouse button and I'm going to lower my window down and I'm going to drag the APRS IS32 program using my left button down into the new location, the new folder. 
Now, it is extracting the file. <clears throat> and now we can close out the previous folder. And now you will see we have a new looking icon. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to do a right click and we're going to send this icon to the desktop by going send to then pick desktop create shortcut. The reason why we're going to do this is we want to leave that original application in the directory that we made because when we execute the program a whole bunch of other folders are going to be created in that sub uh, folder. So we'll send it there and now we can close it out. Okay, it placed it up here. Now we're going to move our program down here so we got a clear view of it and we're going to launch the program. Double click with your left button. You're going to run the program and now we need to put in some information. It's asking for my call dash SSID. I'm going to type in N7LMV-10. The reason why I'm using dash 10 is normally a notebook or a laptop is a dash 10. The next item that I'm going to put in is my APRS passcode that was sent to me and I'll put that in. The next thing that I want to do is I want to pick what type of icon that I want so you put your mouse on the little icon here and a new window will open up and we're going to make the table primary and right now it shows a laptop but you can change it to whatever you want. You can change it to a truck a Jeep, IOTA, a hospital, a hang glider, a fire truck, a horse, many, many different things. But since Dash 10 is normally associated with a notebook computer, I'm just going to put it as a notebook computer. And I'm going to click accept. Once you click, click accept, no other parameters need to be changed. <clears throat> uh, we'll click accept. Now when we click accept, a new window is going to open up. And I'm going to make this window bigger. What it says here is to drag and zoom to the home. Once you get to your location, you will click transmit. Okay, now I live in Mexico, so in order for me to move this little icon, which is my little notebook, I'm going to press down on the left mouse key, and I'm going to move it to where I feel is close to my location. And you're going, gee, that's an awfully tiny map. Well, we can zoom in. And how you zoom in is you can use the plus button and it will zoom you in and zoom you in and zoom you in. Okay. And I'm going to uh, basically just, and another thing that you can do is you can use your mouse wheel and zoom in. And I already have a beacon from my other station, so that helps me real quick get to where I'm at. But I'll just put it close to that. Now, I'm going to zoom in even closer, and I'm going to keep zooming in, and I'm going to move that mouse to my exact location. And I'll just overlap it on my other computer that sent the transmission, and we'll just keep moving it in till it's exactly on it. Actually, I'm more right here. And I can zoom in even closer. 
put it right there. This is a train track and the train track goes into a tunnel so that's why it's white gray white gray. Now that I'm there I'm going to click transmit like it says. Once I click transmit it's going to show down here in the scroller area my call sign. It's going to show me my grid coordinates DL67ES. It's going to show me my longitude latitude longitude latitude and the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to go to enables. Most of this stuff is already set up for you. You're going to make sure that APRS-IS is enabled. Beaconing enabled. Internet access. That is very important that that's enabled. OSM fetched enabled and the sound. Okay, once that's all done, we're pretty much ready to go into the detail of what the program is all about. Okay, the screen is broken up into 28 different sections. I will say all 28, but only a few will be visible. Okay. Alright, the first is the scroller area. That's this area. This is where the call signs will appear that have been received. The next is the message notifier. Anytime that there's a message sent to you or a message being sent, it will show up here, the person that's sending the message. The next is the zoom in. That's this button here. And you can also use your mouse wheel to zoom in. You just roll the mouse wheel towards the screen. And to zoom out, you roll the mouse screw, uh, wheel back towards yourself. Okay. The next area is the map display. That's this area right here. The next area is the zoom bar. That's this right here. The next area is your range circle. That's this right here with the compass north, east, south, and west. That's your range circle. The next is your zoom out. You can click on it and it will move you out. Or you can roll your mouse wheel back towards you. Okay, the next is your range value. That's this area right here. As you notice, if you go in, the range value will change from 23 to 59 or 594. Next on the list, which is not shown in this program, is the GPS precision and altitude. Number 10, GPS satellite signal level. That is not shown on this program. Number 11, transmit is not shown on this screen. Number 12, keyboard is not shown on this screen. Number 13, display type is not shown on this screen. Number 14, menu is not shown on this screen. Number 15, number of satellites is not shown on this screen. Number 16, date and time. <clears throat> that is shown right here. Number 17, which is not shown on this screen, GPS fixed type. Number 18, battery status. Now, that is shown on my screen. That's this green bar right here. Okay, number 19 is station count. This is this yellow bar. The more stations shown in the scroller, the higher this yellow bar 
will go and even change colors. Okay, number 20. Odometer is not shown on this screen. 21. Heading is not shown on this screen. 22. Speed is not shown on this screen. Number 23. The time. That's up here. Okay. Number 24. Volume is not shown on the screen. Number 25. Cellular connection, such as G3 or G4, is not shown on the screen. 26. Data transfer is not shown on the screen. 27. Connection status is not shown on the screen. And last but not least, call sign is not shown on the screen. Okay, so that goes over all of the icons that are shown on the screen, except for it did not show the grid coordinates. It says that I'm at DL67ES and latitude longitude. All right, very good. <coughs> Now it's time to go over the list of items up above. Enables, I already told you everything here. APRS IS enabled. Beaconing enabled. Internet access. OSM fetch enabled. And sound enable. The next one is messages. This is where you read your messages, send messages, send emails, and we don't even go into the lower uh, other five. Okay, screen. Basically, I have dead reckoning, only check. I do not have tracks checked. So, the next item under screens is I want to make sure that the call sign is checked. Okay? That is very important to have the call signs. Okay? You can have speed listed if you want, but that clutters up the screen. Okay, the next item is view. You want to have all checked. And that's the only thing that you really need to worry about. Okay, configure. We already did that. And you can go down to screen if you want. And you can have different items shown on your screen. You can have the altitude, your battery, your circle, your crosshair. You can always go always. That would be fine. Okay, go back down to screen. You can have the date and time shown. You can have it shown in local time or UTC. I'll leave it just local time. Grid squares is nice. Lat longitude. That's these two down here. Checked. I don't know what red dot is. We don't need satellites, so we can turn that off. Wasn't shown anyway. Okay. Everything is set up for you to use your program. Okay, now up here it says PRSIS-3 has sent us a message. It's probably an update. And it says a new version is available and you need to check about to get the update. We're not going to do that right now. All right, so now it's time to use the program. We're going to use our minus here, and we're going to scroll out, and we tap it a few times. And it's much quicker if you just roll your mouse back towards you. And we're going to go to a busy part of the world. Now. In order for me to move my cruiser, my crosshair, to the area that I want, I'm going to press down on the left mouse key button 
and I'm going to move myself to the area using the crosshair as my reference and I'm going to go close to uh, Los Angeles and now as you can see you'll see call signs in the scroller error area start to show up we're going to zoom in we're going to zoom in even closer okay and the closer we zoom in the more detail the cities come and we can see that there's W6CSP-1 in his car there's KN6DB in his car there's a weather station there's a repeater and there's an IRLP node 3012 there's WB6QCS and we can even go in even closer so we're gonna go in closer and I want to get myself into the area that I want and there's Anaheim I want to go into Anaheim and we're going to show you just how defined the map is so we keep going in and I find the area that I want and I want to come right here this is where I used to live let's go in real close where that crosshair is is where I used to live back in the 70s this is Kentwood Park this is Sunkist Elementary School this is Pioneer Park used to play there used to go to a school over here I used to play in this park too alright so now that you gotta see my old stomping grounds let's go back and let's see what we can see okay so we do see a whole bunch of weather stations out there and they'll be showing up here in this area we can zoom out even more let's say we wanted to go up north let's go up towards Sacramento so I'm pushing down on the left mouse button and I'm dragging the mouse cruiser to the area and I want to go to Sacramento we're going to zoom in on Sacramento let's see what kind of activity is going on there doesn't look like much huh zoom in one more click and as you can see we're at CM 98 GM Wow where are the packet stations there in Sacramento <laughs> well here's KS6 HRP dash C Let's go over in that area. Maybe we need to zoom in one more. Okay, not seeing much. But again, it's 12.38 my time. See down here? So that means it's 11.38 there in good old Sacramento, California. Okay, let's see here. Let's zoom out. There's a repeater. 145.430. Here's a weather station. Maybe we ought to go to Hawaii. It's quite a few hours earlier. Let's go to Hawaii. That's Alaska. <laughs> There's the Hawaiian Islands. Let's see what happens.
Here's NH7C-5. Here's KH6COM. Now each icon is different. Go to the big island. Not seeing much there. Okay, let's go to a different part of the world. There was. Hey, there's someone driving a car. You can actually see him driving too if the map is good enough. But it doesn't look like he's moving. Let's go to a different part of the world. Let's see. We can go to New Zealand. Go to the northern part of New Zealand. Wellington, Auckland. Even in New Zealand, you can get some pretty good street views. We'll let the yellow circle do its thing. Let's see if we can start picking up any beacons. I usually watch my friend ZL2 Oscar Oscar James driving the bus from Auckland to Wellington and Wellington back to Auckland. I don't know if he's even on. Zoom up and down the state highway. Well, I see a ZL1 BQE. Let's see, where did he come from? Let's make sure that our view is all, which it is. No problem there. Not seeing anything in New Zealand. Zoom out some more. Let's see, let's go to another part of the world. Let's go to Nor well let's go to go to Italy. if anyone's transmitting beacons. There is an IZ-0 
KEW-6. He's a weather station. There's an IR0CIV-11. IR zero K Let's go down to the boot area. Now let's demonstrate what it's like when you have a message coming in from a particular person. So let's say N7LMV is sending a message to me, N7LMV-10, and it will look like this. And so the message will show up on the screen. Down here it says N7LMV said, hello, this is a test. And if you want to reply and read the message, you just go up to that green area, click on it. It will say <clears throat> at 12.2 at 0.46, hello, this is a test, and we're going to respond back to this person. We're going to go, thanks for the test, and we'll send it. Okay. Now the message is sent. Okay, now let's go back to the US of A. So we're going to zoom out. We're going to go back to the US of A. We're going to zoom in. And you can see all the states. We can go to, uh, let's go to Oregon. Let's actually go to Washington. Go to Washington. We'll zoom in on Washington. <clears throat> go to the Seattle Tacoma area. Zoom in a little further. Okay, there's K7 FRC in his car. Let's say when we wanted to send K7 ERC a message. So what we're going to do is we're going <clears> to <throat> click on uh, his call sign or his car. And it's going to say who he is, what kind of transmitter he's using 22 seconds ago. And let's see. We can look up the address by internet, <clears throat> and there he is. Okay. All right. Now we want to send him a message. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to do a right click. We're going to go chat. <clears throat> nope, that's not correct. We're going to do a left click. Well, I guess we can't send them a message. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's go in further here. See what we got. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Hmm. 
Okay, I clicked on who is and it came up K7FRC E Jeffrey D McDonald. He's in Washington in the United States. Okay. Now there's got to be a way to send a message. Well, the only way that I know is to go message send message. We're going to type in his call sign. We're going to type in K7 F R C and we're going to go chat and we're going to go good morning and we're going to send now if he wants to reply to me <clears throat> he will reply to me if he doesn't well then he doesn't okay here's an IRLP node 7379 And we'll see. Okay, it says here who is. It already said who it is, so we're done. We can close that out. Okay. And that pretty much covers APRS IS32. Hope you enjoyed the presentation.